Chad Pergram, who has been on this all day long. What a roller coaster, Chad. Absolutely, Griff. Uh, you know, we thought this morning uh, that we were going to have a pretty quick verdict in this case, and then they got caught up in this tangle over whether or not they were going to have witnesses, and then by 1230 they were back on track to have the closing arguments. Those concluded just about a half hour ago, and a verdict here. The vote 57 to 43 with seven Republican senators uh, breaking with the rest of the party voting to convict. Probably the biggest surprise there is Richard Burr, the Republican senator from uh, North Carolina. He is retiring next term. And also, you know, Bill Cassidy, who obviously went into play earlier this week, the Republican from Louisiana. Cassidy voted uh, early in the week to forge ahead. He voted uh, saying that the trial was, in fact, constitutional. And he thought after the first day of arguments uh, from the House Democratic impeachment managers that they made a better case. And so he was obviously in play. Now, four times the Senate has voted to determine the guilt or innocence of an American president in an impeachment trial. And four times the Senate has voted that that president was innocent of those charges. Of course, you need a two thirds vote to convict. Now, we've just gotten a statement here that's come in just before the top of the hour from the former president. And this is President Trump says uh, saying that this has been another phase in the greatest witch hunt in history. But again, so this is over. The impeachment trial is over. We're going to expect to hear from the House impeachment managers uh, in a news conference a little bit later this afternoon. We might hear from the president's defense counsel uh, leading, le leaving the building. But again, we've had two impeachment trials in 12 months. Remarkable time here in Washington. Griffin, Jillian. Chad, Chad, we have been following, obviously, your coverage all day long, and I've been texting with you. You've been so helpful. But for our viewers maybe picking up now, can you just explain the, the turmoil that and the unprecedented moves that we saw uh, in the trials today? You have a trial agreement, a framework that sets up how the trial is supposed to go. And, and once you finish the Q&A portion last night, where senators were submitting questions to both sides, then you had this opportunity for the Senate to vote to have witnesses. And it was generally thought that they wanted to get this trial wrapped up rather quickly. What kind of surprised people when Jamie Raskin, the lead impeachment manager from Maryland, came out and said, we need to hear from Jamie Herrera Butler, the Republican congresswoman from Washington state. You know, she had uh, been privy to some of the information from Kevin McCarthy, the House minority leader, who had this screaming match, uh, a telephone call with the president uh, during the riot on 1-6, you know, basically saying, you know, can you get these guys to call it off here? And so uh, Congressman Raskin said, let's put that into the record uh, on Zoom. Let's have her deposed. And and this is where you had Mike Vanderveen, the counsel for the, f the former president, say, if he's, they're going to have one witness, I need to hear 100 witnesses. I need to hear from Vice President Harris. I need to hear from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And you can see how this would devolve off the tracks very quickly. You could spend a month or more on this. I mean, uh, you know, the impeachment trial of Andrew Johnson stretched on for three months back in 1868. So what they were able to do very quickly after they opened up that door, this was what we call a gateway vote here on Capitol Hill where they said, we want to have witnesses, but they worked out an agreement between both sides to say, all right, we're not going to depose Jamie Herrera Butler. What we're going to do is accept her statement into the record. And that got everybody back on course, and they concluded these arguments today. You know, it was, it was rather dramatic where we thought that this might, uh, you know, take up another month or two here on Capitol Hill. And that's particularly of note because they're trying to finish the next coronavirus bill. That is next in the queue legislatively here on Capitol Hill. Chad, it's Jillian. I'm going to ask you to predict the future uh, for us since you're doing everything today. I um, want to ask you about looking forward. You know, President Trump is now cleared for the second time, but in a sense, the entire Senate is cleared to go about their business now. What's going to be the immediate legislative priority aside from the coronavirus relief legislation that President Biden is pushing? Is it going to be confirming the rest of the nominees? What do you see as the next big ticket item? They certainly have to deal with the rest of the cabinet here. I mean, you had uh, Roger Marshall, uh, the freshman Republican senator from Kansas, on our air this morning saying, look, we need to confirm the agriculture secretary. Obviously, that's very important to, to Kansas. Uh, and th that, this was the question. This is why some Democrats question whether it was appropriate to go down this impeachment road. Uh, Chuck Schumer repeatedly said, yes, we can walk uh, and chew gum at the same time, you know, confirm nominees in the morning, 
and do uh, this other business with the trial in the afternoon. It's one thing to take up five days doing that uh, on a week that the Senate was not even scheduled to be in. It's another thing to chew up months and months and months. And probably what would have happened is the trial would have gone dark uh, for a while because they would have had to have done these depositions and, and taken statements off stage and then brought them back in. But again, the next big thing certainly is going to be the coronavirus bill legislatively. Uh, you're probably going to hear a lot of chatter about if they can get the $15 minimum wage into this bill. This is something that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the other day it would be in. But there's some parliamentary tests that they have to go through to see whether or not it's apropos to get through in the Senate. That remains to be seen. And, of course, you have to have the votes to pass this bill. Uh, we don't know if they have the votes there because you have people like Kirsten Sinema, a moderate Democrat from Arizona, and even Joe Manchin. You know, you don't know where they stand until you actually get that bill written. So that is what's going to consume the traffic here on Capitol Hill for about the next three weeks to a month. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she would like to pass it by the end of February. Richard Neal, the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, he said the other day in Massachusetts he thought maybe the second or third week of March, and that's generally what I've been told up here on Capitol Hill. But you know what, Jillian? My crystal ball, it's in the shop. It has a bad fuse, and they can't get the part in. Sorry. <laughs> well, Chad, something that John Roberts was talking about earlier today, and this is important, Griff, had this trial gone on for weeks and weeks or months and months more, it's still unlikely that that would have changed any votes at the end of all of this. Right, right. And that's why we're for a couple hours this morning, we wondered, was there something else that might come out from a further, deeper inquisition into what was the president's disposition on 1-6, uh, what were the details of the phone call with Kevin McCarthy? What was he actually doing? Was there concern about uh, Vice President Pence and the security of the nuclear football, which has the nuclear codes here that travels with the vice president that was with him when he was here uh, to preside uh, along the, with the House Speaker uh, over the certification of the Electoral College on January 6th? Uh, those were questions that people wanted to get to the bottom of here. Chad, don't head to the shop to pick up the crystal ball just yet. We need you to stand by for a little bit more time. Thanks so much.